We'll continue our discussion of flexi layout language by focusing on region expressions, and those could also be referred to as block expressions. So we'll talk about the expression field, different predefined variables, and using regions for more than one element. At this point, we're all accustomed to going to a block and looking at the properties of that block and specifying a region assignment using the GUI interface. And typically that's clicking the source element radio button and then actually selecting from a drop list which element in your element tree should be mapped to that block. But we can also use an expression. And when we use script, then we can do different things such as simplify regions, inflate regions, and discard unnecessary regions and combine regions. So we have a lot of power and because it's script, we can do conditional arguments, which is more difficult to do with the GUI environment in general. We can talk about predefined variables in expressions and is null specifies whether the block was found or wasn't found. And so this helps us make conditional arguments, which is easy to do with scripting. There's also the output region for blocks of all types except for the table block. And with script, that really identifies the region that's mapped to the block. And if we've got a repeating group, any kind of repeating data for blocks that have the has repeating instances option selected, um, you can refer to the variable output instances. And then finally, the output table variable is something that we can use for mapping essentially blocks of the table type. And you may remember from the basic class, there's a slide that gives some code that uses the output table predefined variable. And essentially what that code does is it queries two tables and on a given form. And the table that has the most lines is the table that gets mapped to the block. Region inflation can be very helpful when you're dealing with documents with um, small fonts or crowded text, or if there's stress characters, or like in the Spanish uh, language above an N, you might have like a tilde, so making that an ñ, so, or accent marks you can use this region inflation tool to make sure that this blue block here isn't what we're capturing, but rather that gets expanded. Um, and you can expand both horizontally uh, and vertically or by width and height rather. So you can specify by how much the inflation should occur. And you're, of course, in Flexi Layout Language always required to specify the unit of measurement. We can also, with scripting, combine two different regions. So we've got a region with our recipe information and a region that shows how many people are served. And if we want to have that combined, we can use this kind of code to combine those two elements into one contiguous region. And there's another way that you can do this, and this is by building a rectangle array. So the code is pretty straightforward here. And of course, you could combine more than two rectangles if you want. You just keep building out your array by having more lines that add different rectangles. You can also form a precise region using this code. Your OCR results will be the same, but this is formed differently. If you look at what we've got here is just a series of rectangles that includes where the text exists and doesn't include any area beyond that. So expression fields allow us to define areas really of any geometrical form using the element hypothesis. Predefined variables are used to help us with scripting define table regions or repeating group 
regions or straight up output regions for non repeating group and non table regions. So you can look in the Abbey help file for scripting examples here. And again, you can refer also back to the basic classwork. And there's a scripting example in the basic curriculum as well. And um, it can really help you in certain circumstances. The region inflation is especially helpful when you're dealing with lower quality documents.